Hi, I'm Gracie Opulonsa, and today's all been about Greg Minar, three-time world champion mountain biker. Well, you've been to a mountain bike race. Yep, I have. It was the and first time I met you, yep. And you just waltzed into our pits yep. and started chatting about what mechanic, uh, what underwear the mechanics wear. <laughs> and, <laughs> and then you put it into an interview. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so with it being so casual into the pits, the whole kind of environment around mountain bike is very casual. So it's social. Any fan can come up to a ride at pretty much any point. Mm. Um, there's no... Um, priority between um, the top end of the field or the bottom end of the field you're treated the same and, and the same goes for the party afterwards yeah yeah how influential are you within the mount downhill mountain bike scene um, I don't see myself in influential at all um, no. my main reason to go to these races is to be the best I can be yeah. and to go as fast as I can and, and try and beat as many of the guys as I can so um, I don't really look at anything else but racing. Right. When I um, met you, I was uh, amazed at how um, how much respect you you have within that industry. And 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 um, one of your team members, I can't remember the name, said everyone wants to work with Greg. Why? Why? How have you got that reputation? I don't know. I didn't know that happened. Yeah, you see. Contracts would have been negotiated way differently if I had. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you should start negotiating the contracts for me. <laughs> Definitely. I think, you know, after I met you and after I interviewed you, in fact, you are the inspiration behind why I've done this. You were the very first athlete that I interviewed. Is that because I dress so badly? <laughs> <laughs> Project. And, and I think, you know, and I loved, I loved your whole story and I loved, I think, um, the pressure, you know, how much pressure is on you to perform well yeah I mean maybe that's why you don't see everything happening around you you know when you go to a race weekend you you focus in on that final run and for us it, it comes down to one run and it's it's three four minutes long yeah. um, you can't afford to make a mistake or else you you know you a couple of positions back yeah. um, and it's intense you know you, you you don't really know where your competition is during the week of training and, and riding the, the track there's no um, time on, on what the other riders have done mm -hmm. and so the best you can be is what you can put out on that mm -hmm. race day so to elevate yourself to try different lines and everything it's got to work for that race run. Why do you do what you do then? I think because I enjoy the immense pressure leading into that final run and putting it all together and having a run that you know you could possibly do again but you don't know if you could. Um, you, you're on the edge the whole way down you're riding um, beyond the limits that you, you normally race down the hill. Yeah. Um, you practice at a much slower speed. So when you're racing like that, it's, it's a, a, a very different feeling. I've seen you ride and for me, it's just extreme. What do you see when you're riding? It's all spontaneous, how fast you can um, go through a corner. You know, you'll be coming in really quick and you're going to feel like you need to grab that brake and then in practice you definitely would grab the brake and, and maybe just you know slow down a little bit but in that race run you're just going to force your fingers not to clamp down and and try and get away with it and see how much you can get away with right. until it you know it uh, so are you in control when you're doing this definitely, like for sure when you it, it's crazy everything's happening at such a fast rate but you're able to process it and to to understand that you can maybe push a little bit harder you can feel that front wheel losing a bit of traction you know to back off slightly or if it didn't if you had a lot of traction the next corner you can push it a bit more and, and it's hard. it's always reading the terrain and, and trying to get the most out of it you know most out of every corner or obstacle on the way down um for for guys that like I guess want to be you, what's some of your advice? You know, in in your industry. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't know. You know, I find that for me, I I was talking about this week. You know, I, when I first started, it was really tough for me. I didn't understand how I could improve. I thought I was riding really fast, and I, I wasn't qualifying for World Cups. And there comes a point where you feel, well, you know, can you actually do well in this? And you know, you, you knock on a few doors and one opens and you go for that and suddenly things start to happen and you, you, you're working on your weaknesses and, 
and you just got to keep going with stuff. It's it's different. You know, if you really want to get there, you're going to open or knock on every single door until one does open. And uh, I think that's what's kind of happened in my career. You know, I've been racing since 2000 and 2000 was my first professional year. So that's yeah. quite a, a long time ago. And it wasn't easy getting there. So it's, um, I think, to never give up and to, to, to keep working on those weaknesses is really important. <laughs> For me, within your jacket is, is your life, it, it, it's, it's who you are who, sure. as an athlete, it defines you, right? Well, it's got some pretty impressive images, you know, and, and, and one of the ones is winning world champs in South Africa, in my hometown, yeah. um, end of last season, yeah. and I'm hugging my mom, so I don't know how that got in there, but it did, mm -hmm. and that's qu it's quite a special moment because that was the, the time when, you know, you finish this race, you you had immense pressure as we were talking about earlier and it, it wasn't really that great after winning the race because you're just more relieved and just it's over and you, I did it because I was expected to win you know you're in a hometown and everyone wants you to win and, and they think because you've done it before you should easily do it again and um, to be honest it wasn't one of my most uh, it wasn't an enjoyable win oh. it was a, a win where it was a relief so at the moment, there's actually a, a, a picture on the inside of the jacket that David put in, and it's um, there's a couple. There's one there, all cheering, and and there's one down here somewhere <laughs> with gone. my mom, and, oh, that, yeah. and that's at the point where you you kind of it's starting to sink in. You know, you yeah. you're more relieved than actually stoked that you've won, and. Uh, that's when it's all set in. So I think, you know, David did an incredible job. I don't know where he got all these images from. We um, got them from um, online and, and a couple from the best photographer in the world. Yeah, wow. that's right. And then you've got the rainbow straps, the yep. world champion straps. So yep. it's really fitting to, to my season last year. I've known you for a, a while now. You're incredibly balanced. You're incredibly grounded. What are the influences of, that has made you a, a down-to-earth um, person as you are? I don't know. I don't know what balances or grounds me. Well, you know, your family, your friends, your team. I think it comes on from within. I think it's what you want to be or want to do in life. I don't think, you know, people you surround yourself with too can, can ground you. And if you hang around my friends, they'll ground you very quickly. Um, but then again, I'm from a, a, a small city or mm -hmm. town in, in South Africa. Um, there's no preferential treatment there. And uh, I think that also does help a lot. Yeah, let's talk about um, physically, how hard <laughs> has this sport been on your body? Um, it's, it is hard, you know, being in a sport where you, there's a lot of crashes, a lot of, um, a lot of broken collarbones. You know, mm -hmm. you, you'll be riding and slightly go off track and you clip a tree and, and your collarbone's quite common. You recently had a knee injury. How was that, you know, you were away from the very thing that you love? I was, but it, it was something I needed. You know, I've had, um, I've been traveling a lot, racing a lot, and not taking any time off. And this really put me down to um, to to refresh, regroup, and, and also um, take the attention of riding. You know, I, I, I've, I ride the same routes every single day. Now my rehab's getting my knee strong. So instead of be on the same routes, I'm going to a physio or gym or something mm. else. So it's, it, it altered my training up a little bit. Uh, I think also the challenge of coming back from a knee injury. Um, I found that it gave me another drive this year. You've been in downhill mountain biking for most of your life. Where are you at, you know, within your career right now? Where I'm now, 32 years old, I've um, come close to accomplishing everything I want to accomplish in, in mountain bike and I think that's what's keeping me driving right now is to to um, tick all the boxes. Once they complete, I don't know, I, I probably, um, I don't know if I'll continue to race, I don't know. I, I think if you, you're competitive, you've got to have that drive within you and if you don't have that, I don't think it's worth racing. You've also worked on other projects outside of mountain I biking? I do. Are uh, so. diamonds a man's best friend? <laughs> Um, yeah, so we've, we, I'm involved in a jewellery line called Misahara Jewellery. That's one of the stylists we have, or the stylists we have. 
um, it's 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 fun you know I get I get the same excitement out of working in business as I do in racing which is something I thought I'd start getting involved in while I was racing that when I get to a point where I'm I'm happy to finish racing I've got a, a diff another income I can um, I don't have this pressure to keep going back to race because I don't know I don't have anything else to fall back on um, so through our travel company True Collection and Miss Ahari Jewel we've it keeps me very busy in the off season it's and then we've got bicycle shops in in South Africa so you're very entrepreneurial I would say um, opportunists yeah I like <laughs> that it's very important because a lot of athletes don't think like you so the transition and um, it's a very high statistic of when when things go wrong or when their careers are over um, uh, divorce rates really high and they suffer depression. Mm. I can imagine it, you know, you, you, being a sports person, everyone's throwing stuff at you, you know. Um, whatever you want, you've got it. Um, you never have to buy anything. And that's probably why we, you know, I don't really wear a lot of suits because you just get tons of stuff sent to you anyway. Um, you, you know, you, you're normally earning a pretty decent salary as a sports person. Now you've got to go into the workforce and now you've got to earn that money in a, a different kind of way. Um, and, and you can see it, 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 it's tough, you know, the transition from, a no, from our normal life to normal life is, is hard. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm sure it's going to be tough, so I'm prepared for that. Personality within sport, and I think you've got a nice personality and you're a lot of fun. <laughs> it's not a lot out there. Is it because the person interviewing them? Is it because of the sponsor? It does help. The interviewer does help. Right, okay, that's good. Definitely. Um, is it because they're restricted to sponsorship? You know... There are commitments. I think it's, you know, for most part, it's we're not actors. We're not in Hollywood. We don't know how to speak to a camera. We have fun behind the scenes, and if that gets captured, I think you'll see a lot more personality in sport. But because you see it um, through an interview, it's hard. You, we, we don't really know how to play up to a camera. Okay. You know, I'm building a dream, and I, and I can very much relate to how tough it is going against the grain. And I want to really thank you for believing in me. And, and you know, you don't have to be here today. You didn't have to fly in from Monaco. And, 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 and thank you because... Um, I think we need to thank you <laughs> for putting this all together. Yeah, no, it's my heart. And, and, and it's something that I believe that's going to just grow and grow. And, and you've endorsed it, launched it, and I'm really excited. And um, what can I say? It's about time we get you on that bike, I think. I think so too. <laughs>